women regard each other. Well, currently, my generation. I'm. F this is the year 2020, and I'm 41 years old. The, the women of my generation and older generally regard each other as competition and I think it's because of this as soon as you see a, a, another woman as competition it's usually competition like if you had to ask yourself competition for what for men okay for men as soon as you take the male out of the equation what's the competition for there's no competition right and then if you had to look at that then you'd start to see how maybe female behavior would be very similar to that of the animal kingdom females female animals and creatures out there in the wild world almost never regard each other as competition except maybe in the bee kingdom where the one queen kills her sister bees to be queen bee like that that's pretty pretty uh i was going to say psychopathic but it's just how they do things, right? But if you look at a lot of other species, a lot of other species, lions, elephants, bug kingdom, insect kingdom, spider kingdom, a lot of other animal species, the female is never in competition with other females. Why? So why is she not in competition with? I mean, the female of most other species, especially birds, she's usually the dull one, right? Like the male is like, oh, he's the colorful one. He's got the plumage. He's got the dance. The female's never that colorful. She's usually a bit brown. She's sort of nondescript, right? And the other females are the same, and they are never, never, never competitive with each other. Why? Because they're not dependent on a male for their survival. They're not dependent on a male for their survival. The male and the female in the animal kingdom are on equal plane for survival. For uh, resources, right? You go picking around in the ground for seeds and worms, etc. It's open to everybody. A male can do that, a female can do that. She and uh, Female's not getting her worms and seeds from the male cockerel, right? No. So the females are never in, con in, in competition with in the in the lion kingdom. Lion kingdom, you know, the pride of lions. You see a pride of lions living together. There's a few males there, but the they've been usually, I think, the stronger males. And then there's a small group of them, maybe three, four, five males. And they're stronger ones that have beaten other ones. And they have maybe 10 females or something. The females don't need the males. Because the males don't do the hunting. The male lion with the mane does not do the hunting. He's lying horizontal under a tree often sleeping it's the females that go out together and hunt down an antelope and bring it back they'll rip it open i'll have a bit the the male hunt the the male lion will come and and eat and then the babies will eat what, what's left over and then after that it's scavengers that come i oh, mean like the hyenas and the um, vultures it's, it's the females that go and get the food together and bring it back. There's no competition. They're working together as a team to bring back that food. The male doesn't bring the food home. If the males had to walk away, female lions would still survive. They'd still be okay. And they wouldn't be fighting amongst each other for males. They never do. It's the males that fight each other to belong in that group. The males fight each other to maintain position in that group, and then the strongest ones, you know, pr protect the re the the whole group from other, you know, dodgy lions coming in. But I mean, the females, if they, if they wanted to, 
if there was a, a dodgy, dirty bird male lion coming in and, you know, mucking around with the cubs and hurting one of them, the whole crew would leap on him and destroy him. So the female lions are not dependent on the male lions for, for protection. They're not dependent on him for protection and they're not dependent on him for food. So what's he there for? His nads. He's there for his gonads. He's there to reproduce. And they keep feeding him so that, you know, they keep allowing him to eat so that, you know, he'll, he'll still be around and he can keep bringing him little ones. But for their own particular lives, they're not dependent on him. And so they are never competitive. I'll tell you about the elephant society. I know about this one. Um, in the elephant society, you know when you see a whole big group of elephants walking along and there's little ones? They are almost all female. Unless there is a male who has recently impregnated one of the females. They usually stick around for a while. But generally, the males are in a different group on their own, like doing their own thing. The females stay together. It's usually led by one matriarch, a grandmother, and there's a lot of mothers with their calves, their, their babies. Then when those babies grow up, you know, the, the males start to, you know, like if they're not reproducing, then they grow up and they maybe join, they join the male herd. It's like, I think it's less in number, but I'm not sure. But yeah, the, the female elephants are not, never dependent on the males. They come into heat, right? They come into heat, they want to reproduce, you know, they go, oh, hi, is this anyone? And they let out a call, and then, you know, the male will come from somewhere, and they'll hook up for a while, and then he'll follow, like he'll sort of guard her, follow her around, and stay with her. But he doesn't stay there. Once the calf is born, and, you know, everything's okay, he goes back to his male male tribe and then the females help each other look after each other and on they move to the next uh, browsing ground oh, what do you want browsing eating and uh, eating vegetation they basically eat trees so they have to keep moving otherwise they'll just render a, a certain area a desert <laughs> yeah so that's the elephant society never in competition with each other never in competition with each other there's no need the only reason you're in competition with each other is for a certain thing and that's the male a male who's financially viable if you take him out the picture and you are okay let's just say you were uh, i'm talking to females now uh, you as a human female you had all your needs met in terms of uh, stable income and a roof over your head would you now be in competition with deep competition with a lot of other females? Maybe you fell in love with a person, um, a man or whatever, and you wanted, I love him, I want him for myself. Ultimately, and at the end of the day, he's going to be the one who chooses, is that I'm going to stay with you or not? Okay, maybe then there's a bit of competition. That's sort of like mating competition. I get that. But long term, like, oh, get out of my hair forever kind of thing with other females. That's us, that's human, human females have competition with each other. The rest, you check it out, check it out, go online, check out National Geographic, look up on Wikipedia out there. There's no female competition, they don't do that. It's usually the males who are competing with each other to mate with the females. And I have a sneaking suspicion. That if females really believed in themselves and didn't took themselves seriously and had their needs met, this competition thing would just dry up. But a lot of it comes on, a lot of it comes from the belief that you are Jewett, a belief in your own worth. But a lot of young females are growing up with the reinforced idea that they don't have that much worth, that the male always has more worth. And so there's a self-perpetuating cycle where women are always fighting against each other. Always fighting against each other too. 
to secure a financially viable male. And then once they're with that financially viable male, they basically have to, they're now obligated for what they've traded, like he is providing the financial stability, but now what is she going to provide? So now this is where you have a system where maybe now she's now, she's now the glorified maid, nanny, cook, uh, etc. Right? And now she's got to do that. So this is the thing with women. If I could give any form of advice, if you are beginning to date someone, be careful about how the money is flowing. Be careful about how the money is flowing. What I mean is, if he's always paying for dinner, what's he getting in return? Or what is he expecting in return? Is he due to is is he is he right to expect anything in return? Well, you know, the world's all about give and take. If he's paying for everything all the time, well then maybe then you do have to accept the role of okay, I'm adjunct, I'll I'm the supporter. I will do these things. But you know what what also goes along with it? I've noticed is if once the male accepts that you're okay with that, this is not all males now by the way, but if, if he is paying for everything and he is basically the breadwinner, you are now subject to his rules of the house, think ways of raising children. You are now subject to what he wants in the bedroom and you are also now subject to uh, You are basically subject to the way he wants to run things. Like he's the, whoever's bringing home most of the money, that is the head of the household. Don't don't let, let anyone tell you any different. The person who brings home most of the money, not the smartest, the person who brings home the money is ostensibly usually believed to be the head of the household. So once that the man is totally in charge of finances, or he's the main breadwinner, basically there's going to be this undercurrent that you need to sacrifice things and also what often can tend to happen is that because he's paying for a whole bunch of stuff he you now need to tolerate his bad habits right maybe that's drinking maybe that's sleeping around maybe that's uh, just speaking to you in a disrespectful way or making jokes or gaslighting you etc gaslighting g-a-s-l-i-g-h-t-i-n-g if you don't know about it look it up especially if you're female guys do it all the time it's unacceptable um, yeah so when because the way we raise we always think of give and take so once a male understands that he is now the payer he is paying through the nose for pretty much what, whatever's going on around you, your clothes, the food you eat, the house you're staying in, you lose your rights. Once he's paying for everything, it's unspoken, but you've lost your rights. You've lost, you've lost control over what you want to do with your life, what, what, what your kids want to do with your life, and what kind of behavior comes from him. You've lost control over that. Because at any one point, should he decide, oh, you're having too much of a problem with all this, you're, you're complaining too much. If you don't like it, you can leave, right? Because he's the one in control, he's got the finances. If you don't like it, you can leave. But now, I mean, imagine if, in that same situation, if you had to flip it, the woman had needs met, all her needs were met. She was not dependent on the man for finances. She could afford her own accommodation, food, whatever she needs. Is he still liable to say that same thing? Would they still be in that situation? Once she has her own resources, she is now in a position to expect and demand equal treatment from him. And this is where it starts. It starts with people having resources, having their needs met. Once, when, when a, any one person doesn't have resources, they are dependent 
on another party who does. And then that party, maybe they're, they're wonderful, maybe they're very morally correct, etc., and they treat you very well, fine. But there's a lot of people that would see that as, I'll now start to do whatever I like, and you're going to take it because you need me, right? Okay, so if I could offer any one piece of advice to women out there, and anyone having a daughter, do not buy this spiel that you need to find a rich man. That is, that's the beginning of the end of your independent life. That's the beginning of the end of your real choices in life. You make yourself very vulnerable, very, very, very vulnerable to doing that. So you need to find a rich man, really? And then I find a rich man and then after that he just takes advantage. I mean, I, I think this is also like why, say, why do people get married if they're just going to cheat on each other, right? I mean, I think that this happens quite frequently. A rich man has a wife, I mean, she's like the first wife, but then he has all these resources, she's set up, she's got whatever he needs, she needs, and it's like, oh, what do I want? What would I, what would I like for fun, etc. Now, for fun, with the average red-blooded male, is usually something on the side. And now he can afford to do that, just as long as he doesn't tell the wife. He's within his rights to go ahead and do that because, you know, he's, he's paid for the wife's house. She eats well every night. And she gets you know, coffee mornings with her friends. Just, I should have something for myself, so I'm going to have this mistress on the side. But then, I mean, if, if you had to even it up, maybe he wasn't total winner. Maybe she was exactly halfway breadwinner. Maybe he he'd think twice before taking up with a mistress because if he thought well the, the reason why men often do this is because they're absolutely sure that that first woman's gonna stay if they think if they value the wife or if they value that girlfriend and they know they also know that at any one point she could pick up and leave they're gonna be very careful about mm, should I have something on the side or not right yeah, so be really be careful with that that whole like marry a rich man. It sounds good. It, it sounds good in the beginning, like oh. Now you you don't have to think about your survival. Now you can just chill out. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. It's not going to do well for you or your kids, and you're going to lose power. And right now in this world, men with power, men with obscene amounts of power and money have not benefited us we need a balance we need all the balanced power we can get and women who are self-sustaining and educated are where our next generation comes from you need to stand on your own two feet it sounds hard in the beginning but once you get doing it get good at it and then you are never dependent on another person and you don't have to tolerate inhuman behavior fact so yeah watch yourselves and support each other women need to support each other this is the whole thing of competition throw it out the window women are not your competition if you have to compete for a man in your life, he's not working hard enough. <laughs> like really, come on, man. Life's too short to fight for, for, <laughs> life's too short to fight with someone over a man or any other partner who's probably gonna render you a single mom anyway. Because if you had to fight that hard just to keep him, when you have a baby in your hands, you're not going to have the time, the money, or the wherewithal to fend off all the other females when, when you're busy now with the baby. So basically, any other lady who comes along in that time, he's going to be, ooh, she looked nice, and off he goes really quickly, really easily. A guy's got to really want to be with you. Don't, don't. Watch your standards. I think a, a, a big problem with a lot of women, especially so uh, low social economic levels, is 
The women just have such low standards. They'll just any any man who walks through the door, you know, just, okay, no, be discerning. And if you have to fight, fight tooth and nail for your man, you gotta look after your man. You gotta make sure he stay by your side. What's gonna happen when you're busy? When you're busy with a baby, is he is he gonna is he gonna stick around and help you? Oh, he's, is he gonna notice the next female who comes along? And oh, hey, she's free. Cause you're not you're not fighting for him anymore. Do you even want to be in that position? Do you want to have to freaking fight for a male? God, in the animal kingdom, it's the opposite way around. They fight for they fight each other to mate with the female, right? Come on. Have a little self-respect. A guy needs to show that he's there. A guy needs to prove that he's worth it. He's there. Because if he doesn't, how do you know he's going to be a worthwhile dad or father to be around when your child is born? Or is he just going to be lazy and go, I don't know, there's a baby now, I still want to so my wild oats, you know. Wrong, wrong kind, wrong kind. Or maybe if you do want to, you don't want to settle down, but you've got uh, enough money, or you, you know you can support yourself. Yeah, fine. Hang out with whoever you want to hang out, but don't have any expectations. And then if, if, if then if you have a baby understand that it's all on you you're okay with being a single parent men need to prove themselves even and especially rich ones 